Aunt Pam, I know this is a little bit behind, but I haven't been feeling well for a couple of weeks, so um, I am re-recording this for YouTube, though. Uh, what we're going to be talking about tonight is common mistakes that we see role players making in MMOs. Uh, this was a suggestion by Max a few weeks ago. I'm going to try not to be too harsh on this, but I also want to be accurate in the information and with my personal observations. Now, part of why I'm re-recording this is because after I did the stream, uh, a couple of things came to mind and were suggested by people who were still in the chat that I had not thought to include. So they are included in this. Now, let me start off by saying that I do not think that we need to completely ostracize people because of what they choose to RP. Of course, if you don't like their style or their story, you do not have to roleplay with them, but it's also important that we make an effort to reach out to them as well. We were all new role players at one point, and while not all of the mistakes are made by newbies, they are the ones that are most likely to make them. So keep in mind the type of silly RP you engaged in when you were a newbie. So let's go with the, well what I think is the biggest and most common mistake completely ignoring the lore of the game you are playing to play a role that does not even remotely fit into said game. The most egregious examples of this that I have seen have come from World of Warcraft. Of course, that's also where I have the most uh, MMO role-playing experience. While the lore has not been as consistent as I would like, there are still quite a few things that we know to be true within that world. Some examples of roleplay within that world that did not fit were vampires, Nikos, and other creatures of that sort that are not to be found anywhere within the lore. At least not when I stopped playing last. Um, it is alright to bend the lore a little bit, in my personal opinion. Strictly adhering to the lore can also be boring for a lot of people. Um, while being a little more flexible can add a bit more flavor. You still need to stick close to the types of characters you would see in the lore and Honestly, it's best to stick with the avatar with what the avatar you actually created is. Very few people can pull off RPing a race that they cannot actually create as a player character. Using character concepts from other settings and either not fitting them into the lore or using them as a means to god mod. I am all for making a creative spin on a character from a different genre or lore system if you can make them fit into the game itself. I'm going to give you an example of what I like seeing and what actually happened with my guild. In WoW, I had someone join the pirate guild I was running. He wanted to do an Iron Man type character, which we honestly thought could be kind of cool. With the steampunk aspects of um, gnome and goblin technology, engineering, you know, we figured it could work so long as he followed those rules. To an extent he did, at least with the aesthetics, however it quickly became apparent that he only wanted to make a character similar to Iron Man in order to use it to god mod. He constantly dodged any hits that were aimed at him and was unable to be injured. He did emotes for the player he was sparring with and all of his hits landed. This is not what we want to see. While your character may have better protection thanks to the advanced armor, he or she would not be invincible. I mean, heck, even Iron Man isn't. This ties in with god modding, of course. People do not enjoy role playing with others that are going to be impossible to attack or don't take damage. Worst of all with this is taking control of other people's character. 
The player above did not last in our guild because that is not the sort of RP that we want to participate in. I mean, heck, it became a running joke in the guild that my character, which was obviously the captain, almost died every event we had. It wasn't true for all of them, of course, but she did have a penchant for getting injured. I made a lot of poor rolls. <laughs> uh, there has to be a certain amount of give and take for roleplay to be fun for everyone, and god modding spoils that. Metagaming is another no-no. This is when a role player uses information that they could not possibly have access to in character. For example, just because you know exactly how much damage a fireball may do doesn't mean your character does. In fact, anyone hit with a fireball would probably be too busy screaming to be worried about how much damage it actually did to them. You know, because they would be on fire. You must be careful to use only information in roleplay that it is reasonable for your character to have obtained. Of course, there is also being a Mary Sue or a special snowflake or whatever your terminology for it is. This is achieved many different ways and admittedly, there is a fine line between having an amazing character and one that would be a Mary Sue. I cannot recall where I heard this, but I agree with the sentiment. Eventually, all of your characters will become Mary Sues. I consider it to be a bit different personally. If things happen via RP, then if it happens purely in backstory. Um, this technique I'm about to share doesn't work for everyone, but for myself I prefer to start with a basic idea of the character. Maybe I'll have some idea of her backstory, but 90% of the time the character and her backstory is made up on the fly for whatever seems to fit the character once I actually get to know them better. I personally think it is far better that way than to plan out every meticulous detail before you even know what the character's personality will be. For me, it's not a question of how the character would be if this series of events happened to them, but instead a question of why the character is who they currently are in whatever setting I'm playing. One thing that surprises me are the characters that will just walk up to someone they hardly know and start spilling their entire backstory. Now, I suppose there are actually people like this in the real world, and it tends to be awkward even then. Um, it is important to be careful of how much you share. It's fun to learn about someone's character gradually, even if the other player knows the gist of your character out uh, OC, uh, the specifics are really fun to learn. It can also be kind of boring to sit and listen to someone tell their life story in RP, so it's always a good idea to take that into consideration. This next one is both a pet peeve and a mistake. It's a pet peeve because it gets annoying, and it's a mistake because it makes people not want to roleplay with you. What is it, you may ask? Well, it's steering every single RP session that ever happens to your character to ensure that everything always revolves around you. There are times when this will just naturally happen, and that's fine. When an event, scene, or whatever you prefer to call it, clearly involves other people, you should not shoehorn your way in and then make it about you. There are ways that you can still involve yourself without trying to hijack the RP. Laughing either because it's funny or because you find humor in others' misfortune. Trying to offer comfort or support. Waiting to pull one of the characters aside when there is a chance and ask for more information. There are many ways that one might include themselves without needing to be the center of attention all the time. Sometimes other people need their stories to be told as well. This also ties in a little bit with role players that do a combination of things. They complain about never being able to find anyone to role play with, but when they are presented with an opportunity, they do nothing. 
characters that brood in dark booths to seem mysterious or unapproachable that give nothing for other role players to work with, even when they are approached for RP. Characters that are silent and mope about the whole time until someone finally does RP with them, only to shut down entirely or offer very little up for the uh, other role player to work with. There must be a careful balance when you are trying to have a standoffish character. You need to understand that you will usually get less notice uh, from other role players because of how you have chosen to RP your character, but that you also need to give something in the RP once in a while, otherwise it's likely to become uh, infrequent. A refusal to match the mood of the RP can be uh, frustrating for others. There are characters that like Bender from Futurama, may not have much in the way of empathy for uh, or sympathy for others. There is honestly nothing wrong with that. Heck, it may be, even be great for a character and a lot of storylines. This can go either way though. It could either be a character that is completely unsympathetic, making jokes at inappropriate times and the like, or it could be a character that is constantly moping around depressed, angry, etc., super happy. Um, like Sunny from Scrubs. While a majority of the time it can be awesome, there are occasions when role players may not want that sort of contradiction in what they are doing. It is important to respect your fellow role players' wishes, but there should be a way to do so in character, i.e. apologizing for the interruption and leaving or even making some smart aleck remark before departing, or anything in between. This is not the worst mistake that could be made, but how you handle it as a uh, role player can be. There are many role players that opt to take on more difficult roles, be it difficult character quirks that maybe is not a player uh, character Um, that maybe it can be difficult to pull off, or um, a race that isn't a player character, a particular character type, or even just an RP style, for example, paragraph role playing. Uh, when choosing to do any of them, except the RP style, you should take into careful consideration what you are doing. More so with character quirks than anything, though. Uh, I have role played a character that is completely off her rocker. I have played her for many years now, but it took me a long time to actually be able to play her properly without feeling like an idiot. It's also important to take into consideration that your presentation of a particular mental illness may actually be offensive to people that suffer from that condition. For example, things like OCD are not funny. Uh, and they're, they do have effects on the mind of the person that suffers from them that you don't see. All you see are the odd little quirks that man manifest as a result of it. This is the same with any illness, so please make sure to do proper research on any condition that you are considering portraying before you do so to ensure that you are not making a joke of a serious condition. One mistake that many people seem to make when role-playing, be they new to it or veterans, is being unable to separate in-character and out-of-character things. People that believe that a relationship in-character, be it romantic or otherwise, extends OOC. Or even players that can't separate the anger of their character from themselves. Yes, I can get into my character's by a bit. I've cried over the deaths of a couple of them. It's easy to get wrapped up, but it's important to also remember that the other player may not be quite as invested. Friendships and even romantic relationships have blossomed and thrived because of the interactions that you have online. They come into being the same way they do offline and not in the way our characters tend to befriend one another or fall head over heels for someone.
This brings me, in a weird way, to public ERP. For those of you that are not aware of what this stands for, it is erotic role play. It's very intimate in nature and tends to be the sort of thing that will get you banned in most MMOs, at least temporarily. I will never understand why the people that choose to participate in this sort of RP will do so in public chat. If you are going to do so, then get a room. Um, by that I mean either take it into a private conversation via whisper or other means, or take it out of the game completely. This is something that can quickly have the players ostracized from the rest of the community. Regardless of how you feel about ERP, it is frowned upon by a large portion of the RP community and is not allowed in most games. That's about all I have for the moment. If there are any mistakes that you have seen role players make, then please share them in the comments below. I would think, uh, I think I've covered most common ones, but there could be some that I've missed. Uh, if you have enjoyed this or any of the other videos or streams, then please subscribe to me. Um, and thank you all for listening. I hope you have a great night.